While I'm sure you all are familiar with Facebook taking away interest targeting options, which was basically the only way gurus told you to run ads back in the day, and while they are not gone completely, they are less effective and there's a better way to run Facebook ads for your business. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how this change has made Facebook ads better, how to quickly test for better results, and how to set up these ads step by step. And no, you don't have to have a big budget to make this work for your brand. All right, so in 2014, 2015, when I was just starting out with ads, I had no clue what to do. The Facebook Pixel had just come out. Literally, it was just released. Nobody knew what it was. I honestly was like, what the heck is this thing? If you don't know what the Pixel is, basically it allowed people to remarket to people who went to your site. So it's like a little piece of code or a little snippet of code that went on your website and anybody who visited or interacted, you could run ads back to them, right? It made sense, like, cool, they added to cart. I wanna remarket to people who added to cart. And although we had the Pixel, it didn't have a lot of data and it was the wild west with Facebook ads. Not a lot of things were really tried and true yet. I remember setting up a campaign with an ad set budget optimization setting, which lets me pick the budget I want at each ad set. So to give a little bit of context here, right? You have your campaign, and then you have your ad set, which is like usually your targeting, you can set the budget, and then you have your actual ad. So it's all, the campaign's kind of like the overarching, the ad sets typically, a lot of the settings that you're gonna choose, the targeting, et cetera. I did the budget there at the ad set level instead of the campaign level, which is what we're used to now, where at the campaign level, the mechanism or the algorithm, uh, Facebook ads platform chooses which one of the ad sets. So you could have a campaign and then ad set, ad set, ad set, and it would divide the budget however it sees fit between the three of those ad sets. But I was doing ABO, what's called ABO or ad set budget optimization and picking the budget per day for that. And I thought that was relevant for me and I thought that was relevant for my audience. But honestly, it worked to a degree, but mostly because the ads were cheap and no one was really taking advantage of Facebook ads. Now you gotta realize, today it seems like a gold standard. There's three billion people on Facebook that your audience is there. I don't care what brand you have, your audience is there. But in 2014, 2015, most people were still doing a lot of big media things like TV and print and radio. Like that was still the main thing. Facebook social media ads was kind of an afterthought, not really looking to do something, except for a couple of people who decided to jump into the Wild West. Now, let me show you an article to help you get some perspective on this because I think this is important. Okay, so I'll link this up if you really want me to, but this is from March of 2022 and it happened in 2021. It's happening again now, like literally 2023, 2024. But basically, they're taking away interests that could target certain groups of people and they don't want to feel like they're being discriminated. So whether it's race or religion or thought process, they're taking away those interests, even economic status, right? You used to be able to, way back in the, the heydays, the Wild West, we used to target people who made more money and we're like, let's run ads to people who make more money. <laughs> Makes sense. So I personally think this is actually just something they are saying to continue to take control of the ads because they know best. And honestly, I kind of agree with them. If we look at Advantage Plus, we'll talk about that. It does really, really well and they take away almost all the targeting options. So when we get into the ads manager, I'll show you what I mean with their targeting option because even today, if you're using targeting options, they have an option to ignore your choices. Like literally you check one button, it's like, I wanna target Target. I wanna target Walmart. I wanna target Louis Vuitton. You could do all those things and then you click one little button that says, but if those aren't good, we're gonna do our own thing. That's literally an option and it's pre-checked. So you may, if you don't pay attention to it, already be running into that as well. And that's exactly what we're gonna to get to with this second step here is why you, if you are a smaller brand or a brand that doesn't have millions upon millions of dollars a month to run ads, why you should be paying attention right here because smaller brands and larger brands alike want the ability to test creative quickly without having to spend a ton of money to prove that they have a actual winning ad. Now before testing was extremely complicated and required a systematic approach on how to set these up, but this is no longer the case. Now, don't get me wrong, you should have an actual system it's just a little bit easier now. Before, like I said, we did a campaign, multiple ad sets. We would target people who lived in the Dallas area. We targeted women who live in the Dallas area. We targeted women who like shopping in the Dallas area. We targeted women who 
liked shopping, who also were going to church in the Dallas area. Like we had all of these different things to test and don't have to do that anymore. We can test by what I would say the best option. And I think the best way to do this is let me show you the new way of testing actual creative before we get into actually building out the whole system. So let me show you how we're testing the creative here real quickly. Okay, so we are over inside of Ads Manager. And again, like I said, I'll show you the actual full setup, but I wanna just break this down very quickly. The best thing that we can do right now to test creative is to choose very similar type of creative with new hooks or new intros to catch attention and then everything else kind of stays the same. So we have three types of creative right now. They're inside of Ads Manager. They're set up as a DCT or dynamic creative testing, which is technically one campaign, one ad set, and then one ad. And then the ad actually has three different pieces of creative. Uh, we have two headlines and two headlines. So we have 12 different ads in this one ad. It allows us to test at a higher scale and it will make a little bit more sense when I show you this. But you'll see here that we have this one right here, which is new arrivals. It's more so like a GIF where it kind of switches back and forth. And then we have another one that is again, very similar, which is back and forth. That's literally all we're testing right now. And we have two sets of copy. Our latest collection has something for everyone. So come take a look at the fine and find the perfect pieces for your wardrobe. Time for a wardrobe refresh. Our new arrivals set the perfect way to give a stylish update. Shop the latest styles, new arrivals that will turn heads. So then you have the description, new arrivals added daily. This is obviously for a new arrival approach. Now, this is the new way to test creative. I would do it as a dynamic creative ad set. And I'll, like I said, I'll show you exactly how to set them up here in a second, but let's go look and see how are they actually doing. So we have 16 purchases for $50. Frequency is kind of high for this month, it reached four, 4.8. Um, but let's break down here. I think inside of the DCT, we may have an actual winner and won a couple of losers. So we have this one right here that's spending $70 to get a purchase. This one's getting seven for $40 and four for $40. Now, our average order value, this is profitable for us. We really just need to keep purchases below 45 and it is actually profitable for us. But not, a mu not too much to say here as far as allocation of spend or anything. We're getting some actual purchases, but this is just a test. Then we would take our winner. For example, this had seven purchases. If it had more, I would probably move this to a different campaign or I would give it more budget or I would remove one of these. This is a little hack or a little tip for you who are boutique owners specifically. You probably are like most boutique owners and you have bought really wide instead of deep because you want to look like you have a lot of products on your website. I understand that. One way to kind of go about this is like to, if your product has multiple colors, add every single one of those as an actual product so you can show multiple colors without having to click inside of it. That will make your site look like it's more full. Uh, but if you can't buy deep, if something starts to die off, like for example, I'd go in here and I would replace this one right um, here because it's not doing very well. I'd look at it and I would take notes and I would put it into a tracker and say, this is the change that I made. And then I would add in a new one. And preferably it'd be of something that's like actually in stock. For example, th this may be doing bad because it doesn't have something in stock. And that's the biggest thing that people run into as a boutique owner is that you run out of stock and then you have to update the ads. This will still be relevant for you and I'll show you how, but this will still be relevant for you if you're a boutique owner and you got an ad that can only run for three weeks, right? Replace it, add in the new ones because it learns at the campaign level, the asset level and the ad level. So we keep everything else the same and just update our ads. So this is all working. Like I said, it's profitable for two of them. The third one is not profitable, but this is the new way we would do creative testing. And like I said, I'll show you how to build it here um, in a second. That's what I want to do next. All right, but first off, hold up just one second. I want to say that if you are a clothing brand owner and want to jump into the specifics of your brand and how to grow up profitably online, you can schedule a free 45 minute strategy session with us. There are limited spots, so go find the time that works best for you right now. Check out the link in the description down below. Okay, so the most asked question we get is, how do I set up my Facebook ads? And I'm about to show you exactly how we do it for brands that are making millions of dollars per year. But I also want to point out one thing that may be controversial before we get into this. Facebook ads magnify what works. If your product is not good, Facebook will not fix that either. If you are not doing well organically or anywhere else, if you've not proven your market, putting money behind your product will not make you money. This will work if you have gotten, like for example, good brick and mortars, like a boutique who's sold in person, great. Good content online behind Facebook ads, it will work. 
But if your streetwear brand has a cool design to you, but nobody's actually giving you money, you've never actually talked to somebody, you've never exchanged anything, you're not getting any likes or shares or comments or anything on social, you putting money behind it, probably not gonna make any money. And honestly, I feel like kind of rude saying that, but sometimes you need to hear that your brand is not good. Go back to the drawing board. It doesn't mean you give up. It just means you need to create a better brand, a better design, so that when you come over to Facebook ads, you don't blame Facebook. Because if you find in the back of your mind that you're blaming Facebook for the reason your business isn't growing, you need to look at the business was not set up successfully to grow. This video right here will be very helpful, and the rest of this video of walking through this will be very helpful for the people who are looking to grow their brand, who have a proven product because Facebook ads will magnify that and this will scale you to the moon. Now, let's go ahead and jump into this. I'm gonna basically outline backwards and because for whatever reason, maybe a, a missing card or something like that, but we have the, there's an ad account error. So have a little bit of issue there, but everything is technically live or was live. Let's see here. I'll be, do this in real time with you guys. Yesterday, did not spend any money. Let's see if it's spent money Saturday. Spent money on Saturday. So something happened on Saturday and it still has that issue going on today. So like I said, full transparency. We run into issues like this as well. So I'm gonna do this whole month and then I'm gonna show you guys, okay, what, what's going on here for this and how to build it. All right, so we have our DCT campaign right here. And uh, let's just look at the one that's doing the best, okay? So we have 29 purchases for 35 bucks. We have one that's 69 purchases for 48 bucks. I'll go with the one with 29 because it's lower cost for purchase, lower frequency. So I was like, okay, this one did really well. How do we rebuild this? And just so you know, um, this campaign is set up very similarly, okay? So the campaign and then the only thing we're changing are the ad sets. So all you're gonna do is go ahead and click create go ahead and hit sales because that's our goal is actually doing it as sales. If you have not had any purchases before, you have no data, you may look at going for something besides actual purchases, but even then I probably still would be testing for some actual purchases. Now you can go to the Advantage Plus route. That's not what we're gonna talk about today. I think Advantage Plus is a good option. It's getting better. As you continue to watch this content from us, you'll see that my opinion continues to change, right? I was far left, meaning that I did not believe in the Advantage Plus. Now I'm kind of the middle of the road. It works sometimes, it work, can work for certain brands. Still gonna do a manual sales campaign setup because I think it's important to understand the nuts and bolts and then you can go to the Advantage Plus if you'd like to. So go ahead and hit continue. And then it's gonna pull up something like this. And like I said, I'm gonna make this a little bit easier on ourselves and I'll just show you what it looks like. So underneath this scaling, scaling campaign, very simple. So your labeling can be however you'd like. Usually we do Fit Branding or do BB um, and then DCT and then the, the actual campaign, what is, it, what is it built for, what is it made for. You can label it however you'd like, just have make sure it's a, it's a labeling convention that makes sense for you. All right, so I'm gonna go down here. You can see here, this is also just uh, an update. Make sure you read your updates from Facebook. Advantage plus budget, this means what we talked about earlier, that the campaign budget is gonna be split out between each ad set after you add it in there. So we set up one campaign and you can see we have 43 different ad sets that have been off and on. So that just is, gives us the ability to increase budget. Now, this budget right now is 297 per day. It scales up or scales down based off of profitability. Whole another conversation right now. You just need to build this up. Let's go ahead and scroll through. It looks good. Now let's go to the ad sets. Let's go off into this new Ravels 20. Okay, so ad set here. We're going for website. Website and shop still isn't doing the best. And just as an update for you, if you go website and shop, there will be no more checkout from your Shopify page anymore. It will all be, if you do the shop through like Facebook or Instagram, it will all be on Facebook and Instagram now. So just as a heads up for you on that. Website purchases. All right, we're gonna turn on dynamic creative. This is where the magic happens. It's the biggest differentiator between what is working previously and what is working today. So dynamic creative is turned on. You're gonna go ahead and scroll down here. We are doing something a little bit different because we have the data. If you do not have the data, don't worry about this, but we are excluding purchases from 180 days, website traffic, apps, etc. Now. What we would change for this in the future is we would actually just move this to 30 days. We made, I wouldn't say it was a mistake, but we wanted to test something where we just basically excluded almost everybody because we wanted to focus on new customer acquisition. We did not want anybody to fall through and get another purchase. And, and so we went extreme here and did 180. You could probably do 30. We also did by age, gender, location. So 21 to 64 year old, four year old women, we actually skew up now, we can see that. So we probably should move this to like 30 to 65 plus. That's just who likes this brand. Make sure you figure that out. If you don't, if you don't know yet, do 18 plus. And then as you start to see who buys from you, you can narrow it down. 
We have it set up as a seven day click, one day view as you get data. Again, for this one, we probably can make some adjustments, but we could do one day click or one day click and view. Seven day click, one day view gives Facebook the most amount of data, but also means that it's optimizing for a seven day window, meaning that if somebody saw the ad on day one, they could spend up to six days of seeing ads before they actually make a purchase. I don't really care about frequency too much. Honestly, frequency may be a good thing, especially if you do a DCT where if somebody sees your ad multiple times, they just may need some reminders to get the actual purchase. So it's not inherently bad. Now, the next thing we wanna do, now that this DCT is set up or dynamic creative is set up, we go to the ad level. At the ad level, make sure that you label this. We have new arrivals V20, meaning that we've done 20 variations of new arrivals in the last, I guess, basically since Black Friday, Cyber Monday or so, but uh, from this actual campaign. So make sure you choose a Facebook page, Instagram page. We did a manual upload here. If you have some content that's been saved up to your ads manager before, you can do that as well. But most of the time you're gonna upload your imagery. You'll see here that there's three uh, pieces of creative. We used to do four. We actually last year, maybe about a year and a half ago, we used to do 10 here and we used to do all uh, like, you probably heard us like an image and a video and a lifestyle photo and a TikTok video. I honestly think I'm gonna test that again, but right now what's working is three very similar type of ads, right? It's honestly, it's not my favorite, but it works. It's literally a color that matches the product and it tells them that there's new arrivals and it catches attention, gets people to the site and it works. We've tried a ton of other things. We try to move away from this. It's not my favorite. Please know that I would love to do something more creative here. But as a boutique, running out of stock, trying to get photo shoots in, um, you probably know the world, or even if you're not a, a boutique, you probably know this world as well. So um, just finding a good ad that you can run for a long period of time is, is crucial. We have two sets of primary text. We always write those outside of Ads Manager. That is a big piece for this. It's also something we'll talk about a little bit later, but you wanna do everything like this outside of Ads Manager. I would say the most successful people that I know build everything somewhere else and then add it in here. Your time in Ads Manager, as you're seeing from this video, could be 10 minutes. You could build all of it in 10 minutes, but the research, the, the things that need to be done ahead of time, that's what really makes it successful. So we have two sets of primary text, hitting on the fact that these are new arrivals. I want some punchier text, but for a clothing brand, it actually works, right? So shop new arrivals, new arrivals are added daily. They just wanna know that. The only other thing we could add to here is free shipping, a bunch of five-star reviews. Those could also be helpful as well. All right, make sure that the website events are on, app events, we use Comment Sold for this brand. So if you have Comment Sold, make sure you turn on your app events. Offline events, no longer needed actually because they closed down their brick and mortar. To give context, they did brick and mortar, we brought them online, and then they went to a bigger brick and mortar, and then they went backwards and said, let's sell the brick and mortar, and now they're just strictly online, making more revenue than ever um, with less overhead. So pretty cool story, but we've just, the offline events have basically just continued to stay there. And then UTM parameters, if you're spending over hundred bucks a day, you would use something like Triple Well to track all the numbers accurately. Facebook's about 50 to 70, 80% accurate. And if you're spending over hundred bucks a day, I wanna know where those sales are coming from. If you wanna use Triple Well, we do have a, a link that you can use. It's down in the description below. So that is the full ad setup. What I would suggest for you to do is go back to the beginning of this, rewatch part of it to make sure that you get everything set up correctly. One little false thing here could affect the actual ad. Now that you know how to run Facebook ads, it's time to start figuring out how to grow and scale the brand profitably. Doesn't matter how good your Facebook ads are if your brand cannot scale with profit. We have a video exactly what you need to do to scale your business, the right strategies to grow your brand to millions of dollars per year. Go watch this video right here next. All right, y'all, have a great rest of your day. I will see you next time. And P.S., please make sure you subscribe.